This is the tenth lecture in module four. In this lecture, we will discuss the static Sherbius tribe, which comes under the uh, slip power recovery schemes. Static Sherbius tribes are of two different configurations. First one is de-sealing Sherbius tribe, and the second one is cycloconverter Sherbius tribe. First of all, we will discuss the basic uh, operate. principle of operation of uh, static sherbius tribes in the previous lecture we discussed static kramer drive which allows operation only below synchronous speed that is sub synchronous operation only but for applications which require operations below and above synchronous speed operation we can use static sherbius drive now let's see how the static sherbius drive operates we will be discussing this based on the de-sealing sherbius drive the principle of operation are the same for both de-sealing sherbius drive as well as cycloconverter sherbius drive so we will uh, discuss first we will discuss the de-sealing sherbius drive in order to understand the principle of operation first let's Uh, consider the circuit diagram of a static Sherbius drive. In this circuit diagram, it very much resembles the static Kramer drive. The only difference is that instead of using a diode rectifier, here a phase controlled bridge is provided. That means there are two phase controlled bridge circuits which are connected in anti-parallel. So this is known as bridge one, and this is bridge two. And the basic concept of static Sherbius drive is that it allows the flow of slip power in both the directions. That means, in the case of a static Kramer drive, the slip power was flowing from the rotor through the converters to the transformer and back to power supply. This was the only direction of power flow in the case of a static Kramer drive. But a static Sherbius drive allows the flow of slip power in both the directions. That is, from motor to supply mains and from supply mains to motor. Now, uh, let's uh, consider the basic equations that govern the uh, slip power recovery schemes. First one is the equation for PM. PM is equal to PG minus PR, where PM is the mechanical power, PG is the air gap power, and PR is the slip power. Using the uh, slip power recovery schemes, we are controlling the amount of PR. If we if we are able to control the amount of PR, that means PM can be controlled. And if if PM is controlled, that means speed is controlled. Now let's see what happens if uh, the amount of PR, the value of PR is positive. If PR is positive, that means the value of PG minus PR. decreases if pg minus pr decreases that means pm decreases and if pm decreases omega m that is speed of the motor decreases so the motor operates in sub synchronous speed sub synchronous speed that is below synchronous speed operation is possible if pr is positive and if pr is negative pr is negative means the direction of power flow is from supply mains to motor in the opposite direction this from motor to supply mains is considered to be positive and from supply mains to motor is considered to be negative so in in the case of uh, if the slip power is negative then the drive operates in super synchronous mode because If PR is negative, then PG minus PR increases. So PM increases, speed increases. So it operates in super synchronous speed. So now let's see how this drive allows the flow of slip power in both the directions. First, we will see how a static Sherbius drive allows operation in sub synchronous mode. if it is to be operated in sub synchronous mode that means the flow of slip power should be from rotor circuit through the converters 
through the transformer and back to supply mains. That is that should be the direction of power flow. For this to happen, this converter bridge one should be operated at a firing angle less than 90 degree and bridge two should be operated at a firing angle greater than 90 degree. That means bridge one should be operated as a rectifier and bridge two should be operated as an inverter. If it is operated in this way, then the slip power in the rotor circuit will be flowing from the motor through the converters through the transformer back to supply main. Thus, the slip power flows in the positive direction making it to, making it to operate in the sub-synchronous mode or below synchronous mode of operation. Now, if we have to operate the static show bias drive in uh, super synchronous mode that is uh, above synchronous speed operation then the flow of slip power or flow of power should be from supply mains through transformer through the converters and back to the rotor circuit that is the, we have to inject some power into the rotor circuit for that to happen we have to operate bridge 1 as an inverter and bridge 2 as a rectifier that means bridge 1 should be operated at a firing angle greater than 90 degree and bridge 2 should be operated at a firing angle less than 90 so bridge 1 will be inverter and bridge 2 will be rectifier and if it it is then so the power flows from supply mains through the transformer and converters to the rotor circuit. Thus, the static Sherbius drive allows the flow of power in both the directions, making it possible to operate it both in subsynchronous as well as in suprasynchronous speed of operations. Now we will discuss the features of a desealing Sherbius drive. Most of them are disadvantages. First is if a desealing Sherbius drive is operated near to synchronous speed, then the rotor induced EMF will be very much insufficient for a natural commutation of the thyristors. So we have to use forced commutation, which makes it more complex or more costly. Second one, we have replaced the six diodes in Farmer drive with six thyristors to make it a Sherbius drive. So it increases converter cost and it makes com more complex to design a control circuit for the six thyristors, six additional thyristors. And the last one is the provision of a super synchronous speed control complicates the system and nullifies the advantages of simplicity and economy. Next we will discuss the cyclone converter shear based drive. This is the basic circuit diagram. It consists of a slipping induction motor, phase controlled line commutated cyclone converter and a transformer. This transformer is necessary in order to minimize the rating of these thyristor switches. Otherwise, we will have to use the thyristor switches of very high rating in order to be connected to the uh, supply mains. These are the applications. They are used only for very high power pumps and blower type drives. The, these uh, converters are having some advantages as well as disadvantages that we will discuss in the next section. Next we will discuss the features of cyclo converter shear bias drive advantages. First one, the problem of commutation 
that we experienced in the case of a desealing Scherbius drive very near to synchronous speed is not present in the case of a cyclo converter Scherbius drive. Next, the cyclo converter can easily operate as a phase control rectifier supplying DC current in the rotor and permitting true synchronous machine operation. Third one, the near sinusoidal current waves in the rotor reduces harmonic losses. And ne the next one, the line power factor is unit. Next, the disadvantages. First one is, it is very much costly. Second one is, complexity of control because it is very much difficult to control a cyclo converter. Thank you.